Um, I'm going to present a development of some work that I've been doing in my practice uh, along with students at the London School of Architecture uh, where there is a design think tank called Metabolic City. And we've been looking at cultural infrastructure and what makes a city appealing, echoing the mayor's uh, cultural infrastructure plan uh, that he's undertaking at the moment. And one of those questions that this talk has provoked is the cultural infrastructure uh, of, the, of the night. So what is his cultural infrastructure plan and what are the main sort of preconceptions that surround it? Well, like we've heard from others, it's very much to do with being against things being lost. Um, and it's part of the fact that people are moving out of the city and that with it, people are moving, but also the cultural infrastructure. So we're seeing this kind of mobility uh, of moving further away from the centre. At the moment, his suggestion to protect nighttime culture says that it should guard against loss. I mean, it's very kind of um, uh, a very sort of negative standpoint that doesn't really encourage new places. It's very much about keeping what's managed to survive, but doesn't really become propositional about making new spaces to the degree, the degree that it should. It seems very interested in sort of heavy institutions, the traditional art galleries, you know, for example, like the Tate, a big box with a, a def defined program that might be a late opening just once a month. Um, and we found that we thought these large institutions that operate both day and night actually take care of themselves. We're working with the Royal Albert Hall at the moment, and it really does take care of itself. But for us, the scale that interested us was about the extra small, small and medium scales of cultural infrastructure. So we came up with a proposition called MESS, a metabolic spatial strategy for looking at how the metabolism of the city could support cultural infrastructure and that started by, instead of looking at big boxes with solid functions within them, looking at the kind of networks of, of spaces that people are using and the opportunities that we can found through mobility and how that might be used 24 hours a day. So if we look, let's take a big look at London. All of the planning policy, unfortunately, is still predicated on you living. Uh, 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 the policy has been founded where you are as a resident and you get funding based on the kind of number of people living in your area. Well, we think this is wrong. Uh, the dark areas are where people live, but obviously during the day, there's a huge surge in population, so the darkness shows that the population goes up during the workday. And if you kind of mapped that proportionally, you can see this huge flux that mobility makes, that the, the centre is completely crammed. And what's missed in policy is that transit is now a way of life. And we think culture, 24 hours a day, should go with that and the public spaces with it. So whilst we might see a big railway station during the day, at night, we think we need this to be considered genuine public space and safeguarded so that it can be used for public benefit and transport infrastructure can support public space. We have so much transit in London, it's going through the roof and, and so it should, we need a city that can move. But let's look at what what's happening when it comes to tactical urbanism, the kind of deployment of resources where you might take a function, bring it to an audience, and as in the case here in Birmingham, make transport and performance collide. Another collision on a micro scale, events in the intimacy of the tube that are used for pop-ups and sort of intimate transactions. So the students and the practice looked at a series of sites ranging from Whitechapel all the way out to Heathrow on the crossrail we came up with a scheme that looked at how you could actually demand the oversight development of these new transport infrastructures paying towards local cultural infrastructure. So to take you through it with a nighttime twist, um, we think you should have free Wi-Fi in all of these spaces, both on the platform and on the bus nearby, 24 hours a day. We should have spaces for performance in the public spaces of transit. We should have volumes that can be customized for for different cultural activities. We should provide workspace in the shadow of these huge developments in the shit space, as they call it in the trade. Don't, not, not usable for affordable housing, but could be for fantastic, dem demanded um, affordable accommodation and workspace. Spaces for rehearsal, practice, hobbies, uh, flash mob rehearsals, and of course, the obligatory nightclub. What a better place to put an underground culture than underground. Do that through the fact that SIL, that's your community infrastructure levy, has to pay for 25% of neighbourhood improvements. 
That's not for housing, it's specifically for neighbourhood improvements. We think it should be used for this. And cumulatively, we want to see change in the way that we understand culture in all its guises. But what about Heathrow? It's a 24-hour city, 24 city already, but at night it closes between 11 and 4.30 in the morning. It's designed in a location to be noisy. Its residents are far away. So we think that could become the new 24-hour city that we really need and that a new kind of definition of club class might be available in Terminal 5. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.